Hello my darlings, welcome back to the vlogs. Today is Wednesday, Charlie and I got back from Sicily very late last night. Um, our flight was a little bit delayed on the way home so we didn't get into bed until half past two which Sicilian time is half past three so we actually had a mega mega lion and this morning we didn't get out of bed until half past nine which I actually don't remember a time in history that I have slept that long but we didn't set an alarm we just allowed ourselves to get up when our bodies wanted us to get up so very leisurely start to the day. Today is just going to be getting back into the swing of things. I um, We met so many lovely people in Sicily, like really amazing people, lots of Australians. Um, I think, I don't know, is it the white lotus effect or is it always a popular place for the Aussies? I'm not sure. But yeah, we met some fantastic people and even on the flight home, um, one of the girls that we met, she was like, oh, have you got a busy, busy couple of weeks coming up? And I said, in all honesty, no, because I didn't put anything in my diary after the wedding. Obviously there was Henley and um, Hurlingham, but aside from those two wonderful events, brand meetings, work, scheduled things, my brain just did not go beyond, beyond the wedding. So in the whole lead up, I was just saying no to all meetings because I just couldn't comprehend life after the wedding. So my diary is heavenly free at the moment which is just glorious so just gonna have um it's wednesday today just gonna have a very wholesome and relaxing easing back into real life easing into married life um so just gonna do some nice at home cooking maybe do some baking my cake stand is looking very empty <laughs> and i think i'm just gonna make some yummy treats might even go and do a food shop later on today with you um i need to do some unpacking we've got quite a lot of loads of laundry to do we've got some more wedding cards that arrived in the post that we need to unbox and then tomorrow get back into our fitness routine with simon didn't do a workout this morning because got out of bed at half past nine and <laughs> so leisurely so yes had a lovely pampering shower this morning i used a an amorovixa mud hair scalp mask you um like squeeze this mud <laughs> into your hairline and it's meant to be very clarifying and my hair does feel great obviously still wet so we shall see if it's made a big difference but i think after a holiday like sun i do put SPF in my hair as well, um, all of that kind of jazz, I thought it'd be a good time to do it. And then, yeah, just super hydrating, you know, after a holiday, after a flight, you just want all the hydration on and in your body. So, something I do want to do this afternoon is I want to recreate that pistachio coffee <laughs> that I had in Sicily. If you don't know, I would say macaroni cheese, pistachio, like that is the two, and then saffron risotto, quite niche. Probably my three favourite food things. Ooh, Charlie Iron Sunday roast. I think, ooh. Okay, revision. Mac and cheese, Charlie Iron Sunday roast, anything pistachio, saffron risotto, general kitchen garden risotto. Specifically the one that we had at our wedding. That would be my top food items. So I was in heaven in Sicily because they have so much pistachio. I didn't even, I mean, to me, Sicily, I was like, lemons. <laughs> that is what they're known for, the granita ice cream. But I forgot how iconic pistachios are there. So I was in pistachio heaven. Bought quite a lot of pistachio themed um, food things back with us. So I'm going to be recreating as many dishes as possible. My mouth is actually watering thinking about the pistachio pesto pasta that I had for lunch yesterday. That was so amazing of the hotel to do it because it wasn't on the menu, but I thought, I bet they can do it. And they did. So there we go. I've been rambling to you guys for four and a half minutes. The vlog has not even begun yet. Don't know what you're going to see in this one, but there we go. Outfit of the day. So unsurprising. <laughs> we are back into usual habits. This is a new rendition of the Amazon Josie dress. It's the updated version, which I love, of course, had to purchase one. So we're all very familiar with the Amazon Josie dress, but if you're very observant, you might notice this one has an additional little ruffle on the sleeves and an additional 
tie detail here. So we've got all the design details that I love, the square neckline, the smocked bodice, the ruffles here, um, but yeah, a few extra details. Love the polka dot fabric. Reminds me a little bit, maybe, of my wedding dress, polka dots. As you're watching this, it is currently one of two Amazon Prime days. It's an Amazon Prime duo day, which is kind of like a little bit Black Friday-esque, where so many things on Amazon are massively discounted. So whether you've got a new hairstyler, a new coffee machine, a new TV, fashion items, suitcases, whatever you have got on your wish list, if you are looking for a bargain at this time of year, I will probably do some edits on my LTK page, so if we have done them already I shall leave some examples up on the screen here if you um, are looking for some bargains because we love to troll Amazon throughout the prime, prime time and look for these incredible discounts, so I'll leave the links to those edits down below and as we go through the vlog I'll probably highlight a few things that are also included in the prime discounts. So. There we go, my darlings. Without further ado, I need some luncheon and I need to start unpacking. So a little snapshot into my Sicilian pistachio haul. <laughs> so there were so many amazing shops selling local produce and as aforementioned, I did just fall in love with everything pistachio. So the coffee that I had at this Nuva place was pistachio cream with an espresso poured on top and um, pistachio cream around the edge of the espresso cup and then crumbled pistachio on the top. Absolutely sensational. It's making my mouth water just thinking about it. This is a lovely pistachio pesto, so I'm going to have that with some pasta. Pistachio flavoured pasta, oh my goodness. Um, and this is a another pistachio cream from a slightly fancier shop, so I'll be interested to see if they are any different. This is a pistachio risotto. Now, I'm guessing I'm going to have to add more ingredients to this, probably. So I'll have a little look online for some pistachio risotto recipes. And then we've got some goodies here that we've put together for Lala. Some almonds, uh, some little lemon sweeties, some olive oil made from olives from the base of Mount Etna. Yummy. Some other little goodies in there. And then I have just got an obsession with marzipan fruits, so we picked these up in one of the stores as well. I'm actually going to have one with my afternoon coffee. Okay, my darlings, we've had our lovely luncheon, a nice Dalesford salad, and now I'm going to attempt a pistachio latte. <laughs> I love how I just get obsessed with various random things, and for the next couple of weeks, I apologise in advance, but the obsession is going to be pistachio. So, I'm going to make, um, this is the first, first attempt, so we shall see. Hopefully it's fairly pistachio-y. This is the Nove Pistachio per Tradizione Sublime Crema de Pistachio. I will try to find somewhere that you can buy this online in the UK. Near where we live, about 20 minutes away, we do have an Italian food store and I'm hoping that I might be able to get lots of these lovely ingredients from there. Do you know what? I can almost 100% guarantee that you can get a lovely pistachio cream from Amazon. So I'll have a little look and leave it linked down below. But, oh my god, how is pistachio is so yummarillo. Um, I'm going to make it in this. I wouldn't usually make a coffee, hot coffee in this. This is normally my smoothie glass. But I want to see <laughs> the colour of, um, of the latte. So I'm going to do a very substantial spoonful of pistachio paste. Down at the bottom. No, it's not for you, my Dexie. I'm so sorry. And then I'm going to pour, I'm going to do this over the sink because I don't trust myself. I'm going to pour a shot of freshly brewed La Marzocco Espresso into here. Nailed it. <laughs> Yamarello! <laughs> Someone
someone um, messaged me on Instagram while we were away saying, Josie, what is the Italian version of Yamarillo? And I said, um, you just have to say it in an Italian accent and with a few hand gestures. So, Yamarillo <laughs> is what this would be. So I'm gonna mix together the espresso with the pistachio paste. And if I was to just drink it like this, it would be splendid, I'm sure, but it would be the same as the espresso that I got from Nuve, Nove, Nove, which you'll have seen if you saw the honeymoon vlog. Okay, so yeah, you could just drink it like that, but I like a milky coffee. <sighs> okay, I have a love-hate relationship <laughs> with this stuff. I know that it's not good for me, and yet I can't give it up. Since reading Ultra Processed People, I think I'm going to be even more on it when it comes to reading ingredients. And yet, even though I know <laughs> that this is not good for me, I'm still going to keep buying it and using it because this is my weakness. This is what I cannot be without. So, little top tip, if you're ever curious, have a little look on the back. Water, oats, fine. Rapeseed oil is the next biggest ingredient, which is not good for you. Rapeseed oil can be linked to heart diseases, inflammation diseases. Um, it's very heavily processed, refined, bleached. I think um, it's canola oil, a byproduct of the automotive industry. Not good, heavily modified. Then we've got loads of ingredients which sound very unfamiliar. If it's an ingredient that you see on the back of the pack that you don't have in your kitchen cupboard, probably not that good for you. Dipotassium phosphate, calcium carbonate, potassium iodine, salt, fine, vitamins, riboflavin? Hmm, questionable. And yet, I'm gonna froth some up and add to my pistachio latte. <laughs> to be fair, this pistachio paste, well, I didn't think it was going to be good for me, but yeah, lots of suspect ingredients here as well. Just as long as you're not being duped into thinking what you're having is good for you, um, as long as you know what you're having is a treat, then I think it's okay. But yeah, just be aware of what you're consuming and everything in moderation. Okay, oat milk incoming. Don't know why I thought this was going to be green, but um... It is not. It looks like any old normal coffee. I guess if it is green, it's probably got some colouring in it. Oh my gosh, even just licking the spoon clean then, that is delirious. That really is very yummy indeed. It's just got a subtle hint of pistachio, it's not too overbearing. If you are a mega pistachio lover, you could probably add double the amount that I just added, but that is glorious. Mm. Oh yes, so nice. Um, hmm. These ribbed mugs are also from Amazon. Normally, with my morning smoothie, I pop on the lid and the straw and it's great for your morning smoothie but it's also just quite a jazzy um, glass for your coffee so I'll leave them linked down below. Not sure if I'll be in the prime sale but either way they'll be down below. Well this is one heck of a treat to arrive on a Wednesday afternoon. How did they know <laughs> that this is when we're coming back from honeymoon? Very very clever. This gorgeous bunch of flowers has just arrived from the current body team which is so kind of them. I'm actually going to do my LED mask tonight. I might even get out my big one. So seeing as my flower frog, thank you guys for letting me know that frog is of course the um, real word, not flower spiky thing as Charlie and I were calling it. I'm going to set these out in the flower frog. Shall I or shall I do them in a traditional vase? No, I'm going to do them in a traditional vase because it's easier and Ooh, Campanula, my wedding flowers, how gorgeous. Yes, we'll see how it looks in a regular vase, but how gorgeous. Thank you so much to the current body team.
inspired by our Sicilian troubles. We had a lovely veggie pasta for dinner and now it's a lovely evening. So we're gonna do our evening garden walk, take note of what's growing, what needs deadheading, what needs gardening. Down in the kitchen garden, lots of salad leaves have bolted, like my red oak leaf lettuce over here. So I'll need to pull that up tomorrow, but I've got some rose deadheading to do. Sweet peas are looking fabulous. I'll pick those probably tomorrow morning if we get a nice morning. Broad beans doing well. Courgettes are coming through. <gasps> Yay, you can see at least five there. Yellow ones down there and Charlie, Lala and I have just been down here in the orchard. Look how lovely that, that little sitting area is because what we need to do at this time of year with our young orchard trees is actually pick off most of the fruit because when your tree is this young you want it to focus on growing and not focus on growing the fruit so we're just removing most of the baby apples baby pears and baby cherries that are growing here in our little baby orchard Potato. Wash your hands and stay inside. Thank you, baked potato. <laughs> Is that how it went? How did it go? Wash your hands and stay inside. Thank no, you, baked potato. Uh, don't forget to wash your hands. Um, stick cheese on your baked potato. <laughs> Mine was better. <laughs> what is it, darling? That is a Cotswold strawberry. Straight from organic. our organic. I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. That is top 10 strawberries I've ever eaten. Yeah? Maybe top five. Wow. Do you know the best one I've ever had? is a Dyson made strawberry. Dyson? Do you remember they did them in greenhouses? To oh, prove yeah. that you can grow strawberries all year round in the UK. Mm. James Dyson. Clever chap. But not far off. <laughs> Tutto bene. Bye. darlings it is thursday morning had to check my phone to uh, check that i was telling you the correct date had my first workout in a week with simon this morning it was good it was tough i shall definitely be feeling it tomorrow and now i've just popped on very quick five minute makeup because charlie and i have said we're going to do kind of half work days today and tomorrow and um, just dragging out the honeymoon a little bit longer. I'm not gonna lie, work is a little more calmer at this time of year, which is heavenly. And it means that we might as well make the most of the gorgeous place that we live and do a little bit of exploring. So there's somewhere that's opened fairly recently. Um, it's the Cotswold Guys new place. So we are gonna go and check it out. Charlie is currently researching if he's open for brunch or if it's just a lunch spot. So I'm gonna get ready for that. I've got on my lovely champagne pink colored gown, which you might be familiar with from the wedding videos because all the bridesmaids wore these while we were getting ready on the wedding day morning. It really is the most 
gorgeous gown. It's this pinky champagne colour, very practical three quarter length sleeves. You can also get it as I have got um, in the dark green, which is my fake tanning gown. They wash very well because they're not silk, so they're far easier to wash and care for. And I've also got this version with the feathers on the sleeves and it's so lovely. This is from Amazon. I'll leave it linked down below. At the time of filming, I'm not sure if it'll be included in the Prime Day sale. Who knows, but worth it whether it's in the sale or not. Something that I remember was in the Amazon Prime Day sale last time, again, not sure yet if it will be this time, is my current favorite summer um, base, the Arborian BB Creme. I'm using the shade Doré at the moment in winter. I think I'm the shade Claire, but at the moment I'm Doré. Makeup care face cream baby skin effect. It's amazing, and I'm pretty sure this might be reduced again on the Prime Day sale. You do have to be an Amazon Prime member to get access to those epic sale prices. I think what I'll do in the description box down below is maybe do like my top 10 Prime Day purchases down below so you can have a little look. I can see in the background on my poof is another of my favorite Amazon purchases, the fan. This is forever known as the Freddy fan. In warmer months, Freddy has always got this in her handbag. I was so grateful for this in Sicily and it folds down so it fits in your handbag. So that's another of my favorite Amazon purchases. I've got about 20 minutes before we head out. Charlie has made me a lovely morning smoothie. Mm. Oh wow, that's good. That has got a lot of peanut butter in it. Yum. Um, so I'll quickly put together a few of my existing favourite outfits from Amazon Fashion to give you a little bit more inspo what to pick up in the sale. A few sneak peeks behind me. We know about the Josie dress. Let me pop on my other embroidery dress, style it up as a potential outfit to wear today. Okay, so this is a little bit of a fail-safe <laughs> option outfit-wise for me today. This is one of my favourite dresses purchased recently from Amazon Fashion. There is also the strappy version of this, which I'm pretty sure is in the sales. It's got the most beautiful broidery pattern. There's also a gorgeous broidery skirt that I saw included in the discounts as well. I'm adding a raffia belt, and again, you can get so many different kinds of raffia belts on Amazon. One of my favorites is a little scalloped one. Just to cinch it in, blue skies are coming, so hopefully I might be warm enough in this, but I'm gonna try on a shirt dress option too. I have got on a pair of espadrille wedges, and again, I've seen that the loads of espadrilles are included in the sale, hallelujah, and with this kind of footwear, you really don't need to spend loads of money on the designer versions. I think they all look the same, <laughs> truly. And the ones that I've seen on Amazon are absolutely gorgeous. So Espadrille Wedges is definitely going to be in my top 10 list. And you can always count on Amazon for a lovely basket bag as well. They've got so many raffia, rattan and basket style bags. This is a really nice one if we're going out to do something like a little food shop, heading out to farmer's market, because you can literally just fill it <laughs> with everything you need. But if you want something a little bit more chic, then this one, as you know, is always my go-to. Absolutely love it. Where are my Amazon sunglasses? I'm not sure if I'm going to bother doing anything with my hair today. I have become so lazy with my hair lately. But hair up or hair down, these are my favourite sunglasses. Little cat flick. And again, I think I, think I paid around the £7 mark for these on Amazon. Um, the price does fluctuate a little bit, but I've never seen them go over £10. <laughs> and honestly, I reach for these all the time. Such a flattering little cat flick. So my accessories for the day will be these two. I believe you can still get your hands on my shirt dress from Amazon too, so I'll give that a little try to wear today. Um, and I also saw this gorgeous pair of tailored white shorts, which are so gorgeous for summer holidays, wearing down to the beach with a white linen shirt. So many essentials. So let's try on one more outfit for today. Okay, a shirt dress I do feel is a little bit more of a hair down moment. I think I look a bit stern if I've got my hair up 
and I'm wearing a shirt dress. Oof, I've done that very, very badly. Um, but here we go, a very simple shirt dress. Again, I find the most amazing, lovely shirt dresses on Amazon and they are a summer wardrobe essential. I like to pair mine again with, oh, almost you can do it up as much or as little as you want. I like to pair mine again with a raffia belt. So classic, this adds a little bit more of a kind of beachy look to it. So this is option number one. <laughs> Sorry, very bad hair styling. Option number one, easiest way in the world to style a shirt dress, wedges, straw bag. Gosh, I'm so repetitive. Let me show you how I would do it slightly smarter. So you could do the classic Josie white linen belt if you want an all white look. I'm actually very lucky that the white linen belt and the shirt dress are the same colour because there are so many different tones of white on there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Struggling to do a perfect bow today, but that's a really nice way of keeping it an all white look. And again, fabulous with a little basket bag or even smarter, I would argue, if you've got a really nice leather belt, if you've got a designer belt that you've invested in at some point, then that's a really nice way of adding a personal touch and elevating a white shirt dress. But yeah, they're just super versatile, lovely thing to have in your wardrobe over summer. This one has no design details, no pockets or anything. Does it have pockets? Oh, I lie. It does have pockets. Even better. I should probably do up another button, but gorgeous. Love this, the easiest, most simple thing to wear. Always pack a white shirt dress when you go on holiday. So as you can see, dress them up or down, over a bikini, dressed up for dinner. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so just finishing this little try on in one of my favourite Amazon dresses of all time. This is perfect for those days when I'm probably going to posh out in the garden, maybe dash out to do some errands, go and get brunch. Um, I love this dress. I hope it's still in stock. But yes, definitely um, have a little look at my edits down below. I'm going to be spending some time on the two prime days today and tomorrow to make sure that I get the very best of everything all in one place for you guys. So check that out down below. Now, while the sun is shining, I'm going to go and um, <laughs> do a little bit of pottering about in the garden until we decide if we're gonna go out for brunch or lunch. So let's go and enjoy the sunshine. My fragrance for today is this beautiful one from a brand called Toka, and this is their Stella fragrance. It's the perfect blend of floral, woody, and also musky. It's kind of, orangey orangey but also floral but also woody <laughs> it's very summery i have been i took this with me to sicily and now it reminds me of days in the sicilian sunshine it smells like an expensive perfume and it's very long lasting so perfect for today i thought the bottle was a really good size for traveling with as well kind of looks like an old school sicilian fragrance but oh my gosh that is gorgeous, so long lasting. Got a few from that brand, but Stella is the one that I'm loving at the moment. gardens, bumblebees, reclaimed wood. Bit Soho farmhouse vibes, isn't it? Station. Dog wash station. Yeah, I think so. Very Soho farmhouse vibes. Yeah, it is literally a doggy bath. Charlie's already a fan, so they have got a mega Lamar Soko coffee machine. 
some splendid looking cinnamon buns. Oh my goodness, yum! So, some very cute little seating areas. Lovely painting of, I guess, the owner's dog. Very, very cute. That's the logo. Uh, oh, look at this. Some raw edge uh, chopping boards. I think Charlie's going to have one of these on his wish list. And then they've got this little kind of farm shop section, local produce, and some not so local produce. If you watched uh, Clarkson's Farm, you'll know the drama about avocados. But shallots, cherries, ginger, chilies, and then we've got some fresh food, refrigerated, yummy, so many nice browns. We've got the Salt Pig Curing Company. What's this? I don't actually know what that is, but it looks good. Bolognese Booster, yummy. North Cotswold Dairy, our favorite milk. We are 18 minutes away from the store top cottage here. So a good place to pop by if you're staying in the cottage, some sausages. Let's see, lots of nice local preserves. Really nice, great selection of bits. They've got some fresh sourdough bread here as well. Dunkerton cider, Lucky Saint, Charlie will be happy. Some homemade granola, muesli, pizza flour. Ooh, is this dog treats? <laughs> Lovely, aw. Very nice, little butchery section. Have you seen their um, butcher's blocks? Chopping boards. How nice are they? Like raw edge chopping board. One of these small ones would be really useful. I knew you'd want one of them. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah, really cute little place. I've got a chai latte coming and a bacon, sausage and egg bath. Yummy. Not there, darling. I've got sausage and egg. That looks awesome. We've just seen that they do burgers with parmesan truffle fries and pizza nights on Friday. If so I we're. Get a photo of both the bacon oh. and the egg. Stop. Thank you, Ben. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. much. You're trying one of everything. Nice. <laughs> were a great success. I'm now going to try the cinnamon bun dunked in my chai latte. Ooh, -hoo -hoo, what a treat. Hello my darlings. We are back home again. That was a wonderful brunch breakfast experience. Um, I did my first proper thread as well. Threads, the new Twitter by Instagram. Very intriguing. Um, haven't been on Twitter in a very long time because it just became such a horrible toxic cancel culture kind of place so hopefully the world of threads will be a little bit nicer here's hoping yes did a thread on our experience at the Cotswold guy for brunch very very positive we'll definitely be going back so now back home again and i'm going to finally continue with my chili oil recipe you might remember before we went to sicilia i made um these chili and I'm finally gonna turn them into, hopefully, a chili oil. So, ingredients-wise, we have got Honest Toil. This is extra virgin olive oil, product of Greece, um, that I buy online. It is a cold-pressed, clean, not bleached, not chemically olive oil um, that we first discovered at the Oak restaurant in Bath and it's very lovely and doesn't cost an absolute fortune. Of course, I'm gonna bash up my chilies in the pestle and mortar, and then to add a little bit more aromatic to the chili oil, in here I've got a couple of dried bay leaves. I need to pluck some more from the bay tree in the greenhouse. I've got a little handful of cloves because they make everything taste wonderful a cinnamon stick, and I'm actually going to put in a considerable amount, a couple of tablespoons of chili, um, peppercorns. The spices I'm going to heat up in some oil very carefully, very slowly, over the next 30 to 40 minutes, up to an hour, very slowly heat them up together, and then I will pour that oil over the top of my 
chili flakes. I've not done this before, but what could possibly go wrong, she says. <laughs> so let's give it a go. So this is the level to which I am heating the oil. As you can see, a few little bubbles are rising to the surface, but it's not bubbling, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna keep an eye on it to hope that it stays at this level. In fact, I'm gonna turn it down just a notch. So I'm sure everyone's hobs are different, but I'm on level five out of 10 on the induction hob. Probably better to do it on an induction hob than on the Arga. Not that the Arga is turned on anyway, it's turned off for summer but a lot more controllable this way. Yeah, see, that's, I think, too bubbly. Again, based on the blog post I've read on how to do this, so I'm turning it down one more notch. Yeah, it's gonna keep an eye on it, stir it every couple of minutes or so, and then when this has been brewing for about 45 minutes, I'm gonna give it, then I'll pour it over my chili flakes. <laughs> What have you got there, darling? My cinnamon bun. Whose cinnamon bun? This has got to be an even half. Like that? No. <laughs> like that? No. It needs to be heated up slightly. I'm, I quite like it like this, to be fair. Room if you want yours warm, that's fine. That's the one problem with switching the argo off in summer. There's loads of problems with switching your argo off in summer. A, it's <laughs> the environment, but B, I'd be lying if I said the environment was our first port call. The other main port call is saving some wonga, mate. Wonga. Saving, saving some moolah. Yeah. Um, Dexy, we can't afford to upkeep this lavish lifestyle that you've become so accustomed to, my Dexy. I only eat Daddy, if it's not been cooked in the Arga, then I don't want it. I don't. I only exclusively eat Dalesford. Carol Bamford, if you're watching, I only I'd eat. like to be I'd your to first be face. doggy I'd ambassador. I'd like to be the face of your new luxury dog food range. I love the beef and vegetable and game and pheasant from Dalesford. He's the best dog. He's the best yeah. dog in the world. Right, give me my cinnamon bun. Yeah. Oh, yes. Which is bigger? Oi. I reckon you can have the bit that you've nibbled out of. Thank you. Woo, that is bright and yet, oh my gosh, crazy lighting, crazy lighting, but there we go. Welcome back to the greenhouse. I feel like it's been a while, but um, with all of the wedding busyness, I didn't get to do much gardening over the last three weeks, which is sacrilege because it's just such a wonderful time of year in the garden. So as um, we mentioned, Charlie and I are taking today and tomorrow as kind of half work days. I have done a couple of hours of admin on the computer today and now the sun is coming out. Hallelujah! And gonna do some gardening. So it's July as you know which is um, kind of one of the last moments that you can really do seed sowing in the year. So I have got a few more seeds here and the great thing about sowing seeds at this time of year is that you can sow direct which means you can sow direct into the soil and you don't need to worry about little pots in your greenhouse but that requires space in your raised beds space is one thing that I do not currently have however a lot of my um, early crops like a few of the lettuces have bolted and that's I'll show you what a bolted <laughs> lettuce looks like in a second but Veggies bolt usually when they've got too dry or too hot or a mixture of both or they just Sometimes just bolt for the fun of it and they taste a bit bitter when they have bolted a bit bitter when they've bolted so um, Not ideal. So I'm gonna clear away some of my bolted lettuce I'm gonna add a little bit of soil improver to those areas and then I'm gonna plant some seeds. So let's see Carrot is something that you can plant at this time of year. You can sow direct, and this way you should be able to enjoy your carrots by Christmas. This is an organic rainbow mix, which is great. The more color, the better. Much better for your gut and your body in general to have lots of colorful veggies. So a mix of colorful carrots. This is a carrot called the Chantelay, Chan, Chantene Royal, 
Um, not sure what that's going to look like, but it'll be a surprise. And then these ones are called the Little Finger Carrots. So I can guess that they're going to be little baby carrots. You can also sow spring onions at this time of year, and I love spring onions in salads and in risottos. So that's fantastic. Some winter lettuce. Um, which actually will probably be ready to eat in a month or so. So it's more going to be a late summer lettuce, perfect for barbecues, or midsummer really. And a red oak lettuce, again, great for barbecues, great for salads, things like that. Another kind of spring onion, this is a red variety, salad onion. Delicious. Um, kohlrabi, nice to have something fun and exciting in the beds when other things have gone over. So kohlrabi, again, I think you can put it in risottos as we get into autumn. Rainbow chard, a huge favourite of mine, a few of mine have bolted already, so it'll be good to have these. And I remember last year, I think my rainbow chard kept going until like October. Turnips, fantastic for soups as we come into autumn. You really have to think ahead with gardening, I'm really thinking about those autumnal veggies now. And radishes, super quick to germinate, you can eat these in as little as three or four weeks. So I've got a few different radishes, the Spanish and the black radish variety do particularly well when sown later in the year. Pak choy, another favourite of mine, great at breakfast in an omelette, in a frittata. And then another kind of French breakfast radish, the breakfast variety of radish, is also great for sowing at this time of year. So, um, oh, Bumblebee got stuck, hang on, we have to rescue our friend. The bumblebee! No, come down. You're not gonna get out that way. Come on! Down! No, down. You silly. Yes, there we go. Mission accomplished. Rescue. Mission accomplished. Okay, I'm gonna grab my green um, gardening buckets to clear some space. Gosh, it is so bright. And I need to go and get my sunglasses. Before I get started on my seed sowing, I need to finish my oil. So I'm putting chili flakes in this bowl which is heat proof they've been on the hob for about 45 minutes and i'm popping a sieve here ready to catch the spices and i'm going to pour the oil on top of the chili flakes and then leave it to cool before putting in at the bottle this looks amazing oh my gosh i cannot wait to try this I think tomorrow we're having a barbecue and I'm going to ask Petra to do her burrata and tomato salad and I think this will be sensational drizzled over the top. Yummy! Homemade chilli oil. it's okay hello my dexy i've had so much help today from my glorious children so i have been a busy bee i've been putting some fresh uh, peat free organic compost on the beds after pulling out the salad leaves which had bolted just to give the soil a little bit more nutrients and then i've done a little bit of seed planting i have planted a variety of carrots and i've interplanted them with radish the radish should be ready to eat in about three weeks Whereas the carrots could take a couple of months, but the great thing about carrots and the great thing about doing them at this time of year is that you can just leave them in the ground for a good amount of time. So actually, they might even be our Christmas carrots that I have planted today. I also did a little bit of the red oak lettuce, which is one that bolts, but um, I 
feel like we might have a hot August September which means I'll want more salads which means I'll need a little bit more red oak lettuce now I have got my tub of this is not the nicest job but it's important when your squash like your courgettes and your pumpkins start to flower um, which mine are and starting to fruit so they need a lot of feeding squash courgette pumpkins butternut squash they're very hungry plants this is blood fish and bone which sounds gross and it is quite gross but it is a fantastic feed for very hungry plants so i've got my this is actually an old coal shovel i think we had this in my old old house um but it works perfectly for shoveling compost and plant food so i'm taking a good shovel load putting it around the base of my courgette The best time to do this is before a really big rainstorm and um, that would be ideal. However, Dexie, don't put your snout in there, baby. However, we're not due any rain for a little while and I'm conscious I've not really been feeding my courgettes and because we now have maybe like five fruit on there, it's definitely time to feed them. Otherwise, the plant's just gonna get exhausted. So I am just gonna go over these with a hose pipe once I have applied my feed. Okay, a little break from the garden to put my olive oil, my chili oil into a bottle that we finished. It has gone the most amazing deep colour, which apparently is what you want from a chili oil. I'm try not to spill any of this. Wow. You will hear Wimbledon on in the background, but Charlie has done this lovely veggie curry for dinner. I think it is a kind of Tico yes, <laughs> Korma veggie curry. Looks good, I'm going to dig in. is the next day. I apologize for my appearance. I have been snoozing and relaxing all day. This was a very unintentional chilled day. Charlie and I did have a personal training session each this morning um, and then the weather got really awful. It became a super rainy day. We discussed maybe we would go to the cinema and watch something but then we decided that we would just stay at home and you know when you've just been on the sofa all day? <laughs> and I did put on a little bit of mascara this morning, it smudged down my face. I'm a little bit sleepy, that is the current vibe. 
yeah, it's been raining most of the day. Um, the sun has just come out, which is lovely. So just needing some fresh air. I've just gone and done a few little errands in the garden, deadheaded some roses, picked some sweet peas, and I've decided that in a few days I'm actually going to pull up my mange too, because I think they're coming to the end of their season and it's taking up quite a big area, valuable growing space. So that last little clip that you saw was me planting a few of the courgettes and squash that were in the graveyard area, AKA I planted too many seeds and I don't have room for them so you're just gonna <laughs> go into the graveyard area. I thought I would try and salvage them so I've put them in the beds. At the moment they're not getting any sun but if I pull my mange to open in a few days then they will get some sunshine. I've given everything a good feed and now I'm gonna make a mac and cheese. <laughs> we've got all the ingredients in the house, we've got milk, we've got some lovely nutty parmesan from Dalesford and I'm gonna do what I did last time which is making the um, mac and cheese in the Thermomix which is gonna be good. So yes, slightly low energy day to day but the garden's looking great, um, I think the rain has done it some real good, <laughs> such a cliche gardener thing to say, but while my water boils, I'll show you how the border looks because it's changing quite a lot at this time of year, so let's go and have a little look. Dickens and Dexter perfectly summarising our mood for the afternoon, just all too much. We watched, I've got the cricket on now, but we watched the Marigold Hotel films. Number one was great. Number two <laughs> didn't really need to be made, <laughs> to be totally honest, surplus to requirements. Um, and then we watched Idris Elba in Hijack, which is actually a series. We've watched the first four, I think, up to where it is currently, and it's very good. So we cut back the geraniums because they were just getting massive, absolutely huge and they will now have a second burst of life um, and very soon we will start to get some anemone coming up in the border which is just going to look amazing. The euphorbia, uh, obviously it didn't survive except for that one, the winter, and the new ones haven't taken so well. It's so funny how different years different things do well and obviously this uh, winter we lost all the grasses as well so they're all very little. I think the border really has good years and bad years in alter alternation? Alteration? Alternate. Alternate good and bad years and this I would say is a bad year but it's still not looking that bad. The lupins are always excellent. They are having their second burst. I do deadhead the lupins when I see them getting a little bit brown towards the bottom. Can't remember the name of these, but they're really... Oh, I think actually they're a type of allium. Um, yes, definitely a kind of allium. I think these are different to what Charlie thought they were going to look like. I think we thought they were going to be like the ones that dry out really nicely that we had last year, but they still look great and they fit in with the colour. Salvia has just gone mad, a little bit squashed at the moment from the rain, and the sedum is starting to come up, which is great. This is <laughs> what all the geranium looked like before we hacked some of it down. Um, this is just one tiny plant and it has got absolutely massive. Gosh, it's such a weird day today. It's been raining, but it's been really warm and now it's just kind of humid. Not a very English weather kind of day, I have to say, aside from the fact that it's raining in summer. Can't help but feel a little bit sad um, for anyone that might be getting married today because it's just been quite blusterous. So in the greenhouse, while Charlie and I were in Sicily, Lala very kindly put some of my very sad tomatoes that were in small pots into bigger pots, which enables them to grow much better. I thought we'd run out of bigger pots. You can see I've got my first little tomato on this plant here. Three in here, if you see any little stems that are going yellow, good to remove those. Yes, a few more tomatoes. This one has got quite a lot of little tomatoes growing on the stems in here. And I think I remember seeing a couple of little purple chilies. Yeah, over here, amazing. I didn't show you on camera, <clears throat> but we had scrambled eggs um, this morning and Charlie did some broccoli with them as well. And he put some of the chili oil on the broccoli and it was absolutely delicious. And look, I've already got 
three or four more chilies ready to harvest and a few of my little snack cucumbers looking good did i show you this yesterday i think i did the seed to skin lovely wine delivery i thought how perfect this is for a seed box so anything that i'm considering planting at a certain time of year how perfect so this is what i'm planting at this time of year radish lettuce chard and of course the great thing about planting at this time of year is you can direct sow so you can plant straight into your beds you don't need to worry about growing anything as seedlings in a greenhouse so spring onion we've got carrots pak choy i might do a thread about what you can grow at this time of year more spring onions some turnips what have we got here winter lettuce sorry if my voice feels very low energy i swear it's the weather let me know down below if you feel like the weather also completely controls your energy levels <laughs> yeah lots of radish it's great a great time of year to do radish and you're not too late depending on your climate um, but if you live near where i live or have a similar climate it's not too late to do some carrots ready for christmas so yeah how great is this if i can shut it Speaking of nice containers, kind of loose... Oh, is that going to shut? Might have to lie them a bit more flat. Um, I'm on the lookout for a really nice leather-bound book that I can put some of our wedding photos in, but, like, get it made professionally online. Like I've got my seed um, photo album, I want a really beautiful dark green leather-bound photo album with our wedding photos, like, pre-printed in it like a bougie version of the Vista print books, if you guys remember those. So if you've got any recommendations, please let me know. But yeah, I think that's a great shout for the seeds. This is the trug left over from my courgette growing. You can see that some of them didn't germinate, but that's fine because lots of them did. Gosh, it's quite warm in here. I need to have another graveyard area sort out in here. Lots of things never made it into the beds because I grew so much of them, like the lettuce. Some things, well, this is left over from our wedding table. They were never really planted properly. The little hydrangea in here, though, is doing very well. It's a really beautiful pinky leaf. So, yeah, a real mix. It is quite a crazy time of year because everything grows so quickly. It's hard to keep up. I'm constantly deadheading things in here trying to make sure it doesn't look too scruffy. But yeah, definitely want to spend a lot of time in here tomorrow. The basil, I need to eat more of this before it um, bolts. And please excuse me while I do a bumblebee rescue mission because someone's getting a little bit stuck up here. most iconic site is where I'm going to end today's vlog stuffings. Have you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next one. Good night. Mm.